Hi guys, good morning, or at least it's morning here. Um, I am here to review the Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolor paint. Um, this is a paint that I chose um, because I read a lot of things about it um, and um, they were both very good reviews but also um, disappointed reviews and the impression that I got is that this kind of paint is a rather different kind of paint from the regular watercolour paints that we know and um, let's say the US and European paints and that gets me curious because I have the Russian paint which is incredibly great value for money um, but it does behave a little different than um, the, the, the normal, well, normal between brackets paint that we have. Um, last week I reviewed Magello Mission Gold, that is also an Asian paint brand and um, as you could see the colours didn't flow so I'm really curious what this paint is going to do. What I read about this paint is that it lifts easily, um, it, that it is supposed to contain a lot of gum arabic or some other um, binder, um, that it is semi-opaque, a little bit like lacquer, um, it is said to be a bit shiny, the end result, once it's dry. Um, the colours are said to be sharp and bright. Um, but the colours are also said to mix poorly, so I don't know if this is a pigment based or a dye based ink, I couldn't find too much about that. I didn't look, if you hear something in the background, it's my puppy behaving like, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, the colours are said not to mix. Uh, properly and um, I don't know if this is a dye based or um, a pigment based um, uh, paint I looked it up but I couldn't really find that um, I didn't look very hard mind you um, if you look very hard you will probably find that information but um, I'm just saying things that I've been reading in the reviews um, and it is a, a Japanese brand of watercolour paint. There are a couple of things that I noticed. First thing is how it arrived at my doorstep. This is the 36 colour set. So it's a full colour set and um, it's wrapped in a cardboard box which makes it really nice for painting in my studio but I wouldn't take this with me if I, um, if I would go travelling or on a trip. Um, but I do love the box. I love this green and, and the beautiful gold print, so um, I like that. Um, what I also notice is the order of the colours. Uh, red comes first and then the yellow and the white is at the back, even comes after uh, the black. Um, so this order of colours is um, different than uh, what I know. And it makes me wonder what the um, philosophy behind it is. Is, is, is red more important um, than the other colours are, for example? What I also noticed is that there is nine... Well, I think they are greens too, these. I'm not sure I have to look. Yes, this is nine greens, which is pretty much pretty heavy in a 36 colour set. So. I don't use green very much, but you know, these colours might be so beautiful that they make me change my mind. Um, of course, it contains three metallics, silver, gold and copper, which I'm really curious about because um, in other brands, the metallic pans are usually harder to lift, so I'm, I really wonder. What I also noticed is that these pans are big, which is very handy when you have a big brush. Um, for instance, if you would be using a brush like this, that would be very convenient. Um, what I also noticed, however, is that there is only very little paint in these. I don't know if you can see that, but if I keep it like this, maybe I should choose a different colour. Hold on. I will choose a colour that makes it a little bit more visible. 
And you know, it can still contain as much paint as any other brand, I don't know, but it's kind of hard to tell because the paint is um, all the way on the bottom and when I press it between my fingers like this, it feels like there's hardly any paint in it at all. Um, and it also stands up on the side, so it looks like a full pan, but it's not even half full. I don't know if I can get this out. I don't think so. It seems glued to the glued to the bottom. Yeah. Now I've been spilling some red onto my other paints, but um but I don't actually know how much is in there and it it I don't know if that's um it sort of gives um the impression that you didn't quite get the amount of paint that you bought when pans are not well filled. On the other hand, you know, you can add quite a bit of water in them without them overflowing. So, but that's just, you know, an impression. Okay, so I'm going to make the color swatches and give you the first impressions that I have of this paint. I am working on uh, Etival watercolor paint by Claire Fontaine, which I think is pretty good. It's a uh, student quality, but um, I really, really love it. I've already drawn a grid here with the colors on it, the numbers and the names. I actually had to look up the names um, on the internet because um, in this box there are only the numbers here and then some Japanese that I can't read. So um, I looked that up. I've also drawn in a black square as you can see and that's for the Chinese white because the Chinese white is said to be very opaque and that's what I wanted to test right here. So I'm going to zoom in so that I can film one row a little bit more in detail. So starting out with red. Just the plain red. Wow, that's a lot of color. This is red with um, a pink undertone. And there is quite a bit of uh, flow happening. And Moving on to Carmine Red. Which also has a pink undertone. And in this bottom half I always just add water to see how the flow of the paint is. And like last week I did the Magello Mission Gold and it flowed, it didn't flow as well. Um, this one, the Kurutaka, I don't know how you say that by the way, Kurutaka, it flows well. Then we're moving on to dark pink. That's slightly less intense. It need, takes a little bit more work to get the paint onto my brush. Look, there is nice flow. I read somewhere that this paint reminds people of um, gouache. Well, so far I can't say that I have the same experience. I work with gouache pretty much and This is definitely not as opaque as gouache is. Look, there is a nice flow. I love that. So far this paint is behaving more like watercolour than the Magello Mission Gold was. Cadmium Red. I can see that 
there is a, a greasy spot on my page right here but that is not the paint doing it that is um, I don't know maybe a fingerprint or I don't maybe I don't know what that is but something is um, that's that's my paper it's not the paint doing that right scarlet red whoa haha <laughs> I love this. This is a beautiful scarlet. Oops, I touched the pink. I didn't mean to touch it, but I did. Something big is going on. I don't know if you can hear the sirens, but... Uh, I didn't mean to touch these paints on either side, but unfortunately I did. So, But you can see how the paint flows. It flows from here to there, from there to there, and from there to there. And I didn't mean to do this, but this does give me a lot of information about how willing the paint is to flow. And it's very willing to flow, so I I like this. Moving on to orange, that colour picked up really beautifully. That is a beautiful orange, by the way. Maybe it's just my imagination, but... Um, this colour does feel a little bit Asian to me. Maybe it's a different kind of orange that the European and US sets would name orange. This would be sort of a yellowish orange. and um, But I like it and I, I'm really curious how they will dry up. I'm under the impression that this number 32 red dries up quite a bit lighter than it was um, when I um, when I painted it, when it was still wet. Now comes a colour that's called light brown that we would call ochre. doesn't flow as well. There's less flow in the ochre. Okay, mid-yellow. It's a gorgeous bright yellow. Reminds me of gamboge a bit bright yellow and this bright yellow in the in the box I can show you looks like a dirty kind of yellow as in um, as if it's not purely yellow if it, as if it's been contaminated and it looks a bit like that here as well I don't know if you can see it but it's just like you picked up yellow paint with a brush that contained some remains of grey or something but as you make it lighter, it does become brighter as well, as in um, that it doesn't look as dirty anymore. Lemon yellow. Lemon yellow is a bit more opaque. I read somewhere that um, somebody was um, not very happy with this paint because you need quite a bit of it and um, some colors indeed I find I need quite a bit of water to get a lot of color off but other colors they pick up really really easily olive green that is this is an interesting version of olive green because this is more like a grayish green in um, in the sets that I know, um, they're a bit more yellowish, I think, and this seems more like um, the color is changing a bit when I when it starts to react with the paper and it starts to dry. But it's 
very often it contains more green, more like a navy green. But on the other hand, this does look more like the olives <laughs> that we eat. Okay, we're going, moving on. May green. Spring green, May green. Oh, again. It's quite... I don't know what that is. I thought this page was really, really clean. I tried to mind that. So this is not the paint doing this. This is probably probably have greasy fingers or drops of something fell onto this. Um, it's a beautiful green, beautiful bright spring green. Then mid green. That is um, a beautiful warm version of green. That's a color that I would use in my work uh, a lot, I think. I'm not too sure about the pigmentation of this paint, whether it's densely pigmented or not. Some colors are, some I, do, some I have my doubts about. This is called ocean green. And, well, I touched the other kind of green, um, so there's a bit of flow going on there. I had expected um, a more bluish kind of green, to be honest with you. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought this to be ocean green. Evergreen. That really looks like <laughs> kind of funny. I would have expected this color to be evergreen sooner than that color. And I find myself wondering while I paint um, about the name giving of the paint. Um, does it say anything about the culture that this paint was made, created in? Because what we call normal can be different for other cultures and other areas of the world. So the ocean green, in my mind, would have been much bluer. But, um, well, it's just a name, of course. It doesn't say anything about the experience of painting. Okay, now we're moving on to what they call green. So this is green. This reminds me of green food coloring that we have. <laughs> We once bought that for a children's birthday party. And it's this kind of green. After green, we now have marine green. So not ocean green, but marine green. This is a colour I think I know from my other palettes. But it would never have been called marine green. It is still very green for, you know, when a colour is associated with the ocean or the sea, I would have expected more blue in this. And this does contain a bit of blue, but less than I would have expected. Now we're moving on to turquoise green. Yeah, this is sort of what I would have expected. <laughs> ocean or marine green <laughs> to look like. I am uh, laying the paint on very heavily on the top as you can see. As you can already see there are a lot of greens in here compared to the number of yellows and reds. That was the first thing that, that I noticed when I opened the box, all the greens. I was wondering, what am I going to do with all these greens? Now this is a pretty opaque colour, 
and this color doesn't is not as bright it seems a bit oh god I hope I'm not it seems a bit muddy when you look at the the color in the box it's really bright and shiny but on the paper it becomes a little bit less bright it sort of yellows down a bit and it's not my paper my paper is white so but you know in the end you always have to you know let these colors dry and see how you can use the paint that you have Number 61, Cornflower Blue. This is absolutely my favorite color of blue. Um, it's gorgeous. It's also like the Grecian, the shutters in Greece are also often this, well no, they're more, they're more blue. Oh, this is a gorgeous color. This is one of the colors I haven't been able to find a lot I like it. There is a little bit less flow in this color and that could be because it's more opaque so maybe it's got more fillers in there um, to make it opaque. It flows a little less. I love this color though. I, I think I will find myself using this. Moving on to 64 blue. That's probably what we would call cobalt blue. Oops, <laughs> touch the green there. I, th I feel some colors are not very intense. Some dry up a bit more intense once they are on the paper, but when you lay them down, they're not as intense as I expected they would be. Persian blue, oh, gorgeous color. It's just an opinion, but I like this color. But there is something about this paint that, that it's not, it doesn't. It's true what, what people say, this paint is not your regular watercolour paint. It behaves differently. It's kind of interesting. Now we're moving on to what Kurotaka calls cobalt blue. Oh, this would absolutely not be cobalt blue in a European or in an American set. This is nothing to do with cobalt blue as we know it. It does make me interested in... I'm going to see at the bottom if the color... Yes, the color code is correct. So they actually really call this cobalt blue. I would say this is more cobalt blue than that. Well, let's see how it dries up. Moving on, number 66, and this was an interesting name, Menthol of Violet. Menthol, I would never have associated Violet with Menthol. Ah! <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I would never have expected. Where is the Violet? I don't see Violet in this. <laughs> I love the color, by the way, but is the color this this can't be right can it i'm going to check the color code again this is supposed to be 66 let's see yeah well so actually they call this menthol violet we would be calling this in some sets it would be called prussian blue or delft blue or some sets would even call it indigo somewhere in that region is where you have to think but Kurotake says no this is menthol violet <laughs> it's like how can you make violet of this color it's well <laughs> oh sorry that's something that um that's funny okay moving on to deep blue i'm expecting brown this time <laughs> No, this is deep blue. This is indigo. This is um this is indigo. This is the color 
that they used to colour jeans with. Really straightforward indigo, and yes, you can call that a deep blue, nothing unexpected in there. Now we're moving on to deep violet. So, guys, hold on. <laughs> now, this actually does look like, yeah, this is violet. Wow. Look, this really is deep. Here is where I get enthusiastic about intense colors. Because I don't know if you can see this, but this is a color that's very dense in well either pigments or dye um, this is a beautiful uh, deep violet it absolutely is I think I will say I will have to see how these colors dry up but so far I think this is the most beautiful and most intense color of the set um, along with the turquoise green that I really really like as well and I don't know if you can see that, but let's go there now before I forget. But if you look at this turquoise green, I don't know if you can see that. I'll have to try and zoom in a little bit more. Can you see that in the turquoise green there are little um, white spots? Sort of like as if there is texture in my paper, which I can guarantee there isn't. I didn't add... Um, gesso or anything you can also see that happening right here in the marine green oh, right here in the marine green and also right there I wouldn't call this granulation but something is happening that adds a bit of texture gets me interesting to start trying oh I wanted to move oh I wanted to move the other way okay yeah. So moving on. After the deep violet, we're moving into purple. I I would also perfectly be fine to call this deep violet purple, but what strikes me about these two colours is that they're quite close. Um sort of look a bit like each other um, although this is much darker oh now we're moving on to deep pink because I was going to say I am missing um, a more mauve like purple in this box but sorry I <laughs> hadn't got there yet um, moving on to that because I think that's where we're getting right now yeah This is like a cherry juice, pink, purple kind of colour. I don't like this very much. I don't know why. It's, it doesn't seem very bright. No, it doesn't seem very bright. Okay, brown. Number 46, brown. kind of funny this would probably be what a sienna a sienna variety in a regular box well not a regular box in a european box it's a it's a red kind of brown then we're moving on to dark brown and that's um you could you would compare this to van dyke brown it's um, a greyish kind of brown, sepia, Van Dyke brown. You have to, 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 um, it's in that region of colours. Okay, moving on to number 20, black. Yeah, I was expecting a really black black there. Um, because, well, you know, I don't know a lot about, um, Japanese art at all, but I do What I know about it is I, I always picture that black the lacquer kind of black the really deep black that um, is often in in Asian 
um, art, or well, Chinese and, and Japanese as well. I, I remember black and the black ink and, and the sumi drawing. So I was expecting a really good black. What I do notice is that um, the black just sinks straight into the paper because there is little flow, just a little bit of clouding there. And um, it's interesting. It's different than the regular European and, and US black, but um, it's interesting and it can be useful. Moving on to the Chinese white that is said to be much like gouache. Well, I can confirm that one. Um, what struck me about the Magello Mission Gold last week is that um, the white was um, definitely a zinc white and not an opaque uh, Chinese white, as it said um, in the box. But this really is Chinese white. This is made of the Chinese clay, I think. And um, is I wouldn't go so far as to say that this paint is a genuine crossover between watercolor and gouache. No, I don't think so. I think this is definitely um, watercolor. Um, gouache behaves differently. I'm going to um, review the gouache um, that I have very soon and um, you'll see it's very different. Moving on to silver. I would not call this silver, I would call it pearl, pearlescent white. This is not silver. At, at best it's pearlescent white. I don't like it. It doesn't pick up very easily and well I will have to let it dry but I don't really see a proper sheen about this. I have to say I'm I'm really really harsh on metallic paints. You will rarely find me enthusiastic about them um, because um, what I when I use metallic I want it to pop out like sheet like um, like leaf gold wood for instance. This is better. This is gold. So I'll see how it dries up. And this does seem to contain some metallic particles or, or mica because um, I can see how these little particles move on the water. So I'm really curious. Now the last colour of this set is the copper. And after that I will um, get a few other colour charts of other brands. This is a copper but usually copper is warm and red. This isn't. This. I'll see how it dries up but this looks more like um, well a mix between copper and bronze. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this dry and um, I'm going to take out um, a, color, a few colour charts from other brands to give it a quick um, comparison uh, about the colours and the intensity. Okay, so the paint, the Kuretak is almost dry. There is only a little drop of um, water there, um, but I'm leaving it because I can see the rest. Um, I have a couple of um, colour charts to compare this paint with. Um, what I wanted to show you first is Thailand's gouache um, to show you that, um, sorry, turn it around, um, to show you that it really is very, very different from these colours. As you can see, these colours are opaque and much more um, intense um, than the, the Kuretake. So I, I would not call these because I, I read that on a couple of um, uh, review sites, I read it on YouTube in a couple of videos that it was considered a mix or sort of a crossover between the two. No, definitely not. This is watercolour. Um, it is different though than the watercolours, than the, the, the classic brands that we know in Europe and the United States. It's different, <laughs> but it is watercolour. So, if you want to check again, this is um, Talent's um, gouache and um, it is cheap at least over here in the Netherlands it is cheap paint and you know a little a little um, glass jar goes a long long way um, in fact 
the first that I ever bought I'm still working with um, and as you can see the colors are wonderful because I made this chart I don't know how many years ago um, the only color that seems to fade a bit is the rose which is normal because I don't know any brand that can make a really um, light fast um, sort of opera rose kind of color I don't think it exists I once had uh, a, um, a pinkish kind of um, purple on my wall and it took me five layers of paint before it covered it well enough to be satisfied with it but then a couple of years no not, not even even a couple of months later the color had already um, become much lighter so don't expect too much there now let's compare this paint the kanzai the Kurataka Gansai Tambi to the Magello Mission Gold and um, what first thing I noticed is that Magello has a few colors in there that are really um, sort of neon like the bright opera and the yellow green for instance I see none of no colors that look like that in this set except for the lemon yellow which is a very beautiful and bright color it uh, is not very opaque sometimes in european sets you will find lemon yellows that are pretty opaque um the mission gold jello the lemon yellow is also pretty opaque um i think the mid yellow and the bright yellow look a lot alike there's a little there's not much difference um and even the red and what they call light brown what we call would call ochre there is not very much difference in there if you look at the permanent yellow deep that we see here in the mission um magella mission gold it's much brighter it's much more how do you say that tangy or that it's much sharper and brighter um what I love again is a few colors stand out to me. It's the deep violet, it is the turquoise green that I don't find in other colors. The pale aqua, I don't think lives up to its expectations, unfortunately, because it's quite a unique color, I think. I don't know this color from any brand that I have, um, and I don't have all the colors from all the brands, mind you, but um, I don't recognize this as a familiar color. Um, but, well, you know, it seems a little bit more blue in here, in the pan, and a little bit more green, um, so as if it's yellowed on my paper. What I love is this cornflower blue, which um, is not like cerulean blue. This actually is the most um, opaque color after the um, Chinese white. Um, but I love this. It's beautiful, beautiful color. Um, the blue, number 64, dried up much lighter than... Um, than I had expected and the same applies to the number 46 the brown um, browns do not tend to be colors that dry up much lighter in the European sets um, the pigments that are used um, are simple um, straightforward pigments usually clays and stuff like that so they don't really behave in a very uncharacteristic way but this becomes a lot lighter and thereby it reminds me of uh, a brown that looks like this that I have in the St. Petersburg White's Night set and that also dries up much lighter than when you apply it onto the paper. Number 46, uh, 7, the dark brown um, absolutely reminds me of sepia or Van Dyke brown it's somewhere in the middle probably sepia um, but it also dries up pretty light if you see how much I added um, how much I laid down on the paper the black also dries up um, not as intense and not as um, opaque as it was when I applied it so it does these colors do tend to well not all of them but some are much more toned down the dark pink um, the red here the number 32 I find a bit disappointing because when I lay down a paper I thought well, you know okay let's see how it goes it's not very intense um, I would probably use number 30 and 31 and hardly ever that one or apply many layers and see how it works um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with this uh, soon and see what it does you know can you lift the colors easily um, what does it do 
I already heard that when you start mixing them the colors will become muddy and so and stuff but I will just have to try that out for myself because um, I can't say that on the basis of this color chart I can only say I do find it it is a different color chart from all the others that I have basically this is a very classic color chart moving from white to the yellows the reds the blue the green the brown and and then the um, the metallics the metallics can I say something about that well I will stick to this is what I call silver I don't know it, metallics are incredibly hard to show this really looks like silver metal this Kurataka looks like um, mother of pearl it's beautiful if you like mother of pearl but it's not silver um, gold does look more like gold but I applied one thick layer here and then some water here it didn't really it's not opaque so you would have to perhaps apply some more layers if possible because I don't know if this paint accepts that the copper uh, the same it dried up a little bit more red and warm than I um, thought it would um, but it would need a few more layers to really get that you know that it almost jumps at you the metallic you need to work on that but that's just normal because I will have to find the first watercolor paint that will really really you know be very metallic and wonderful especially from the pan because it's different from tube paints because they are more easy to um, to use in a thicker layer of course well I hope this has been useful to you. Would I buy this set again based on this? Um, by the way, what I can actually see on my camera right now is that this, the colours on camera actually look brighter when I look up at my screen than they do for me in real life. So that's kind of interesting. Um, that's always very difficult, you know, in trying to show people something about colour. Um, because the camera is always different than what you see right in front of you in real life um, but this color is definitely not this on camera to me right now on the screen it looks like opera pink I don't know if it looks different on my computer screen when I start editing this video but to me this really is not a bright pink at all so concluding I would say there are a couple of colors I really really love the cobalt blue that is really not actually a cobalt blue um, I think I love that I love the turquoise green because it's got this really remarkable um, sort of white dotted effect um, the deep violet I love that one very much too and the menthol violet which is just uh, this is the most outrageous name that I have heard because I don't see any violets in this you would say menthol is cool so it's a very cool violet well it's incredibly cool because I can't find the red in the violet and I would say that every violet would have to contain at least a little speck of red so the deep blue here is really as you can see and that's kind of funny this is denim if you would buy this color then expect to use it as denim if you are a designer of fashion and you are going to design a denim line use the Kurotake deep blue number 67 because this is absolutely denim and also with the texture of the paper showing through it actually really looks like like it's woven fabric so denim so I would not compare this set to an artist set as of Schminke, Rembrandt um, or Winsor & Newton because it's different is it worse no it's different and some colors are not as intense as i would have hoped they would be um but i think this paint has its use um and well it's also much cheaper than the artist brands and you always have to take that into account when reviewing a paint because you can you cannot compare um, a 1970s um, old car to a modern-day Mercedes of let's say two hundred thousand um, dollars not saying that this is an old second-hand car but you know it's just two different things it's apples and pears so um, you know if if you have a budget for this paint that, that can afford you this paint 
then this is what you're going to get and I think it'll be good. I don't know if you can mix it well and I don't know if it does those things like, I, I would probably, if I would have to compare it, I wouldn't even put it right beside Cotman and Van Gogh. Um, I would probably, I would probably place this in the category of the um, White Knight's paint. It's sort of weird, exotic watercolour paint. Well, that's all I have to say about it now, and um, I will come with a, a, de a demo and um, review of the paint later, and I'll start mixing and doing some watercolour things with it and see how it responds. So, see you then. Bye.